This dish is almost certainly the grandfather of asobuco, and it dates back to at least the 16th century. A trencher was what nobility ate off of before plates had been invented. Basically just a giant piece of really overcooked bread. When the wealthy people had eaten the food off the trencher, they would discard it, sometimes literally throwing it out the window, where peasants were waiting below to devour the stale, hard-baked crust that had absorbed some flavor from the rich sauces. Even after the advent of plates, though, the idea of a big crouton sitting under your meat remained essential in fine dining, and it didn't really die out until the 1930s. Now this dish is all about the meat. You need pork neck. You need something with a lot of connective tissue and this nice, beautiful marbling through here. This is extremely important for this dish. Don't use any other cut pork neck. As you cut the steaks from this, you may find pieces that are at the edge that are, that are solid fat. You can go ahead and, and remove those because we don't want to have a, an abundance of, of fat running over this, but we definitely want to have a lot. At least two look pretty good, and you can see that they're quite thick. Oh. And we're going to season this up with some coarse salt. I'm just going to do one side right now, and after it gets in the pan, I'll, I'll put the salt on the other side. And uh, with coarse black pepper. Just a tiny dusting, tiny dusting. Don't overdo it of flour. You can also rub it around the board here and pick up some of that pepper on the other side before you put it in the pan. Okay, the pan is hot and ready to go. This pork has a lot of fat in it already, so I'm not going to put any more fat in the bottom of the pan. Just going to let it render out and cook in its own fat. And as I said, now it's on the other side, we'll put a little bit more salt and pepper on this side. Okay. While the meat is browning, you cut up the brunoise of your celery uh, shallots and the carrots. And um, normally, you know, I I'm, I'm usually tell you don't worry about knife work too much because it's going to get crushed or it's going to get put in a blender or something later it won't make any difference. Here's a case where it really should look pretty. You should do a good job. Pay attention to it. It's going to show up on the plate as nice pieces if you did a good job. <laughs> um, it's also got three cloves of garlic, uh, just peeled, not cut, and a bay leaf. Uh, some white wine and uh, the other ingredients here. Thyme. After a few minutes we've got some browning going on. We're not looking for super deep dark caramelization on this like we are sometimes. We just want good sear on the outside. That's enough. Okay. And a few minutes go by. You've got roughly the same amount of sear on the other side. So we'll pull this off to a plate. Hold it for a few minutes. Now we put in the vegetables. Carrots. Celery. After about one minute of stirring these around, you can add the white wine to it. And reduce this down until it's quite thick. I'm also going to add the bay leaf and the garlic cloves at this point. After two or three minutes, it's uh, the liquid is evaporated, and now we're ready to proceed. Now, if you have it, this is the time to add some good quality homemade demi glace to this. And people written asking, what, how thick should it be? Here's demi glace. It's really thick and gelatinous, right? That's what you're looking for. This is going to add unctuousness and depth to this sauce. Um, and it, even though this is made with veal and we're doing a pork dish, it won't matter because this, the, the veal is their gelatin mostly. It's not really strongly veal flavored if you made your demi glace properly. So you're going to stir this in just to melt it. And now we've got our baking dish here. I'm going to put a little bit of this down underneath. Down. Pieces of meat that were cooked. Put 
juices over them. Yeah, not too much around. And the rest of this vegetables. And you kind of spread it around. Make sure your bay leaf is, is stuck down on the side somewhere, not over the top, so that you don't have parts that are overpowered with bay leaf. Um, you got to, you could tie this time together with string, but we're going to try to be careful here. When we pull it out, we'll try to get all the pieces out. Uh, then take some baking paper, put it over the top of it, like this. And then I'm going to wrap this up with foil before it goes into the oven. And in it goes in the lower part of the oven. Once the first 45 minutes of cooking time is done on the meat and the temperature is lowered, we're going to begin preparing the trenchers, which are really thick pieces of bread, uh, buttered on one side. The key to these is to cook them very slowly. Do not try to rush them. Use a heavy pan on a low heat cook slowly. When I say slowly, I mean slowly. These have been cooking now for an hour. Still low temperature. <laughs> Who wants them really dried out, really nicely dried out because that's what a trencher is. The heat is quite low. It's on them like two and a half out of ten. Um, the meat's almost done. And eventually the long brace time is over. Open it up. Get the time out of here. And take the liquid from this pan, put it to the same. Now we reduce the juices from the braising dish in the same um, pan that we were just cooking the trenchers in until this gets to be thick. When this is reduced enough, then we're ready to stir. Well, the first step is we have these garlic cloves that are now extremely soft. You know, even though we've got three cloves and two trenchers, you can, you can kind of divide it out. You want to smear this on the, on the bread. It's almost like a confit garlic. And we put the meat on top of the bread. And divide it out among the two plates. Sprig of time. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.